Hey guys, so in this video, I'm just going to go over the mash technique for doing uh, the fence that like flows along your ground. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Now what I'm talking about is if I had my ground here for my scene and I had done a soft select. You know, kind of manipulated these around a little bit. And I get an uneven uh, ground here. So what if I wanted my fence to go up and along this? How would we do that easily? Um, we can use the mash technique to be able to flow our fence along this ground. So what I'm going to do is come up into my curves and surfaces and do that EP curve and I should be able to do the vert snaps and snap along the east side my ground obviously it doesn't go I don't have the base down so it doesn't go fully along it but I'm gonna get the general idea and then we can push our fence down you can also go into your side view and just, oops. and if you didn't have that on, you know, following along the side of your plane. Okay, so I'm just going to do with the pivot fence um, here. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my cube and create that original fence piece that I want. Get off first vert snap. And with my cube, I want to make sure that I can have that extra division to pull up. Let's go ahead and add that to our width. Oops, just needed two. And then squish this with R into the size that we want our fence piece to be. Remember to keep popping up the rest of your scene if you've hit a, hit on a layer so that you can get the correct size of fence that you would want in your scene. You, know, you don't really want it too big or too small compared to the other objects in your scene there. to edge mode, making sure that I'm out of soft select, and I'm going to come up and grab that middle one top, and just pull it up to that picket fence style board. Alright, so now I'm going to come into object mode, and with this selected, I'm going to come up to mash, go ahead and hit this little cube up here, so that is mash in this um, toolbar panel, the biofrost motion graphics, we're going to go ahead and hit the cube. And our fence is going to pop up uh, at zero, and I'm going to go into my attribute editor, curves, add a curve node, and look at my outlier. Your outlier isn't open, go to Windows and Outlier, Outliner, sorry, and then you can find your curve. <clears throat> if you have multiple curves, you may just want to go ahead and click on that curve and rename it. Um, if you have lost your mash, you can click on the mash over on the side and go and find where your mash curve is. This is very important. When you have your curve, instead of clicking on the curve, you can, you'll lose this mash node uh, menu. You want to middle mouse click until you get that plus that is by your mouse. So right now it's a little document. 
Metal Maps doesn't work well, and then I'm going to drag it over to that curved shape. If this isn't working for you, go ahead and Z back until you get out of this mash node and do an edit, delete by type history, modify and freeze transformations. Sometimes it, uh, it's a little, you know, set so we can go ahead and I want to find the mash distribute. And underneath linear, I am going to go to initial state. See how mine is being thrown way off? So that's what I'm talking about with that edit, delete by type, history, modify, freeze, transformations, because it's remembering how far it has moved from its initial state. So I had taken it from zero, zero and moved it over here. So now it is being thrown that far distance out of the way. Now this should still be okay, because it still should follow along my curve, but let's go ahead and see. I'm gonna pop these number of points up. It doesn't look like it's doing much here because they're all on top of each other, but don't worry. I'm going to do about 50 maybe and just see how that is. And then going back to mash underscore and curve, I'm going to bump up a step. should follow along my curve. Now this is obviously way too much, so I can go back to that mash and distribute and scroll down the, the number. What I'm looking for is a good distance apart. I can go back and fix this later, um, but a good distance apart that's still following along my path for my ground. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna click this and uh, do a edit, delete by type, history, modify, freeze transformations, do a duplicate, and then go to mesh and separate. Now each one of these should be its own. And I can come down and with a modifier center pivot, bring this down to my ground where I would like it to be. And come in here and fix these posts. So they're more of where I'd like it. And go ahead and delete this mesh. I don't need it anymore. Now what about the bar that follows along our fence? So with that curve that we have here still, we're still going to use that. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to create the bar along the fence using the exact same curve. So I'm going to go up into poly modeling. And if you are doing the wrought iron fence, you may want to use a cylinder. Uh, if you want a square backing to your fence, you can go ahead and use a cube. I'll show you how you kind of set up both. So I'm going to drop a cube down, get it about over to where this square is. Now this is um, part is a little bit annoying to get it to catch on to here, but You'll see what I mean in a second. I'm going to do both of them, but go ahead and only pick the one that you need. So if you are doing the cylinder, if you want a cylinder pipe to go across the wrought iron fence, or even your picket fence, go ahead and drop the cylinder as well. And then go ahead and move it over. Now with the cube, since it's the same on all sides, we don't need to worry about that, but we do need to turn this because we're going to extrude along the curve of this circle on top. So in the channel box and layer editor, I would go into inputs and make my caps to zero so that I can just extrude this face. After that is zero on this one, because it needs to be facing here, I can go ahead and do an E to rotate holding down J to snap, and snap sideways. Now I'm going to be using the cube here, uh, but if you are using the cylinder, it's the same thing once as you have that one face at the end. So what I want to do is delete all faces except for the face that is facing towards here. 
But first I want to get this into the relative shape that I would want the back of my fence to be. So the width and the height that looks appropriate to the back of my fence. So I'm thinking about that. Go ahead and do that to your cylinder as well. Okay, so now that I have that done, what I'm going to do is just leave this one face here. So I'm going to go into face mode and select all the faces except for the face that I'm going to extrude out and hit delete. So I should just be left with one face. If you're with the cylinder, go ahead and do the same thing in face mode. Delete all faces except for that and the cap. So it should look like something like this. Uh, that's done. You can see that my pivot point is still in the center. So I can do an edit, delete by type history, modify freeze transformations, and a modify center pivot. Now that that's done, I need to snap this face to this curve. So with the move tool in W, I'm going to hold down C and you notice that it switches to a circle. Clicking in the middle of that, I'm going to attempt to snap this to the curve. And this is the difficult part, because sometimes this doesn't like to snap. When you snap it, it should be doing this. So I can't pull it any further, and it just glides along my curve. Perfect. Go ahead and put it at the end. Now with that done, I can do my extrude along a curve. So I'm going to go into face mode, select that face. Now you want to make sure that you're in face mode and not object mode, or else this can get a bit confusing. So go ahead and select the face in face mode and shift select the curve. Go up to edit mesh, pull out the pop-up box for extrude, make sure that it is on selected. It should be, but we just want to double check. Hit apply. Move the box out of the way. Yours did that as well. Go ahead and go to your divisions. I'm going to add some more. It only goes up to 25. And I think that looks good for me. Remember the important thing is, is that we need to duplicate this because this is still attached to my curve underneath. So I'm going to do a control D to duplicate. And then I can move this over to my fence. There you go. You have a fence that goes on the edge. Maybe you need to um, adjust this top one just a little bit. Go to face mode and just pull out that end face. So now you have a imperfect fence that is easily created with curves and the mash. So I hope that helped. Thanks.